Hey, welcome to Men on Scandal, our, our weekly recap of every Scandal episode from a male perspective. And Tor Johnson is there, and Mark Clark is there, and I'm Tony Scott. And the episode is called Where the Sun Don't Shine. Mm. And we open up with Olivia kind of like reminiscing or daydreaming or something, but she tell, does tell Fitz to, she wants Fitz to charge her mom, Mama Pope, uh, and I, I thought they had said earlier that they had executed her, but I guess that was not the case. But And also she tells Fitz and Jake to hunt down Eli and kill him. <laughs> yeah. I want y'all to hunt down my daddy and kill him. In front of uh, Mama Pope. Yeah. 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 How yeah. do you like that for a starter? Yeah. <laughs> Does, nothing rattles Mama Pope, huh? Mama Pope is just in chill mode all the time. I mean, yeah. we'll talk about the conversation later that she had with Olivia, but... Uh, Huck's wife apparently found out that he had contacted Javi, and she is livid. She is. Well, she found it, She found out because I told her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty she much. No. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So you know that's 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 another backstory that's going on, and uh, we'll we'll get more into that as the uh, as this episode unfolds. Now, Liz Elizabeth North, the uh, Republican chair, uh, confronts Olivia. Remember, she had hired Olivia to find out. Who was who had bugged her phone and Olivia, you know, found out of the whole truth about everything, including just how foul Elizabeth North is. So she told Elizabeth North that you just got a virus and my guy, he cleaned up your network and everything, it's all good. And Liz was like, Oh, okay. Well, Liz apparently her phone was still acting kind of funny, so she went to someone else and found out that Cyrus was bugging her phone, and so she accuses Olivia of knowing this and looking the other way, which she was not happy about. You know, but this episode kind of evolves around Cyrus and the fact that the sexy time pictures of him and Michael apparently have uh, gotten out to a newspaper, man. Yes. And they uh, now it's time to to, to uh, decide what to do, whether Cyrus needs to resign or whether they're going to stand and fight. But I I, I, know, I didn't know when they decided they were going to fight because the White House was stalling for a while and then they said they're going to fight. But what were they going to fight? I mean, the pictures, they are what they are. So, I mean, what what is there to fight? These are pictures of Cyrus uh, engaged in adult activities with a companion. Having sexy time. Having sexy time. So, I mean, what's to fight about that? I mean, it's... it's it, it, Two grown men having hot, lovely relations. <laughs> But, I mean, that's not illegal. What he did was not illegal, was it? Well, it depends on what he did. Yeah. Well, and, it and, was and, illegal because it, it, because he paid for it. He was sleeping with a whore. <laughs> a man whore. A man whore. <laughs> it's, not, it's not legal yet in D.C. Well, okay. So so when Olivia, uh, when they decide to fight it, Olivia tells Cyrus and Michael they need to get married and they need to have a prenup. And so Michael says, so... Cyrus will own me, and Cyrus is like, you mean as opposed to renting you like I'm doing now? You know, and, and so there was all these little cute quips going back and forth. I thought that they were going to drop, we ain't getting no younger, we <laughs> might well do it. <laughs> they did. You were hoping, you were hoping for that, man? Hey, this song is good. <laughs> that song is too new for, for this show. Okay. okay. And Cyrus, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> you've, been paying, you've been paying for this. Yeah. Don't try to, don't try to get, you know, snap back now. Yeah, Cyrus will go off uh, erratically. Well, you know what? M Michael agrees to the plan to get married and to sign the prenup. Cyrus questions Michael's uh, motives, though, and uh, starts he starts throwing out the one-liners, including you could play yourself in the porn version of Inside Cyrus Bean. That was like... Damn. <laughs> no, no, really. <laughs> so Cyrus says he won't do that to James. I mean, do what? James is dead, you know? James, you you guys were on the outs when James was killed, you know. And James from, from the grave, James was like, "What?" <laughs> James treated me like a piece of crap when I was alive. Yeah, James, James, six feet under is like, what? What you? What? This doesn't even come close to what you did to me. Poor James. You know. And then, and his daughter was like, "What?" <laughs> Ella. You don't even know my dad did. <laughs> little Ella, man. Now, we, hey, little, little Ella. Her in a minute. Man. Next season, she's going to be 12. Well, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Next season, she's going to be played by the, the girl in Annie. <laughs> no. Next season, she's going to be played by Taraji, man. <laughs> so she's oh, going wow. to be just grown. 
<laughs> you know? Apparently they'll be using casting from the Aaliyah movie. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, Jake, Jake meets a guy who has video footage of uh, last week's uh, black ops uh, killing, uh, getting killed by B-613 troops. He gets it in a, in a thumb drive, and then uh, it was a quick exchange, and then a guy steps from around the corner uh, to kill Jake. I'm assuming that was B613, and Jake sees him in a mirror. It just happens to be one of those mirrors when you're, you know, one of those uh, truck mirrors those big that they put on walls, those concave mirror kind of things, and, and uh, Jake kills him. Jake puts the uh, 007 move on him, right? He he hits the ground firing his gun, and he... And he, and he uh, and he double tapped him in the chest, man. So right. they got they got to update they got to update the uh, techniques to try to kill Jake, man. They, they used a 1976 model from James Bond. Yeah. It was like, what? Yeah. I want to handle it, and then as soon as I hand it to him, you come out and he turns his back. <laughs> no, no, nah. that's too old. Man. <laughs> that's not that's not 2.0. Well, <laughs> you know, that's not 2.0. You're right. So it comes out that Jake is the king of clubs, which is a kill card from B613. It's like, kind of like what we had when we were going after, was it Saddam Hussein we went after and he was like the king of clubs or something? Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. So, so uh, it's, it's a... They it, ran a Boston on him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I so. He should have he known something up when they had him on a go fish cart. <laughs> Jay- Why are you going on a go fish cart? Jake, Jake. This is a pack of cards from the game Trouble. <laughs> what are you not trouble. Not trouble, man. Oh. <laughs> so Jake Jake decides he's going after Rowan because Rowan was coming after him. But when you go after Jake, you're going after basically one guy. When you're going after Rowan, you're going after an army. Clearly. Clearly. <laughs> All right, Quinn but goes to meet. Can do everything. So Quinn goes. Don't give a damn. Quinn goes to meet Charlie to tell him that Rowan is cleaning house. Command has decided he's cleaning house, man. Like in The Godfather, when Michael settled all the family businesses when his when his nephew was being baptized. You remember the dude got shot in the eye and the guy was. <laughs> <you remember> that? <laughs> he was cleaning. He's cleaning house, man. So she tells Charlie what's going on, and then they start making out, and then they do some some life affirming stuff. So you know they. Uh, Get it in and everything. So, uh, and you know, what I love about their pairing is there are two cornballs. So yes, it works. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? He Charlie would not have that sex appeal to anybody but a queen. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. And then you know that Quinn, Quinn could step her game up though. Quinn could actually. She has arrived to a degree. She could go to another. But Charlie, no. That's about all you're gonna get, buddy. That's all he's gonna get. <laughs> now she went on on an espionage run for some information. Like they they went to dug up some guy and cut his finger off so they could use his fingerprint to get to where she had to go. Yeah, you know, was, Tony. Your favorite thing about her is she will chop off body parts. She has no problem chopping off body parts. And don't give a damn. She took some scissors. <laughs> I mean, put it in my put it in my purse. She cut that finger. Yeah, finger what, was, right? what kind of what kind of shears were those? Were those finger shears? You know, <laughs> you, you, where do you get those at the fabric shop? You know what? I don't know. I'm trying to cut some burlap and a couple fingers. What do I need? <laughs> you know, I might have to go to a lawn and garden store for that. Something, man. Know. Yeah. So Jake gives Olivia a gun, and he shows her the kill card that's out on him. Jake tells Olivia to say the word, and they're back in the sun. Just say the word. We'll leave all this behind us, and we're back in the sun, baby. Frolicking. Frolicking, man. And she says the sun went down a long time ago, and it ain't coming back. Damn. Whack, 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 whack. She Poor does Jake. She does say she knows how to use a gun, though. Yeah. But by the way, Tony, that's not the only thing that went down when she said that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Poor old Jake, once again. Man. Man. And that was, a good, that was a good insight into how men live. Like, the woman sets the pace. If you're going to get some or not. Right. He wasn't going to get none that day. You know, there was no, nothing, nothing that gave you the sign that, Hey, except maybe when he showed her how to do the gun, yeah. but still her energy kind of killed. So that's how women. That's how we live every day. Well, and you know what? You're, you're trying to figure it out. You're right because in the next scene is is Elizabeth North going to see the vice president, and they end up, you know, she initiates it like you said, and they they do it on the desk. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Boy, that, those Shaka knows how to come up with some pretty steamy scenes. Though I give her that. She stages them really, really well. 
Yes. You know? She, she, she definitely gave him the knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she did. Yes. The, president, the, the vice president has knowledge. Yes. Man, this guy has something because he he is getting it in quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Con- Busy man. Congress pretty much wants Cyrus to resign because of the sex scandal, the pictures and everything like that. And Cyrus wants to resign, but Fitz doesn't want to accept it. But in the end, he does, you know, he's reluctantly, he's kind, of, he's kind of sad to have to take the resignation. But, you know, Cyrus convinces him the big picture is this is what's good for the administration that I go because of, you know, I was a horn dog. I love, I love when Fitz, that's, that's great acting when you don't say anything in their face. Fitz had the face to crinkle. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to, you know, I was like, that's good. Okay, good job. Good job. <laughs> He got, the, he got the Brubaker on that scene. Did he get the Brubaker, man? He got the Brubaker. It was brief, but he got the Brubaker. All right. So David subpoenas Abby. Uh, they're investigating the, this Cyrus thing. And so she's in his office with a court reporter. Uh, and David asks her if she has an alibi for her whereabouts on March 25th when, when Cyrus deleted all correspondence involving Michael. And then she stops. She goes, well, I want to go off the record. And she says, you know, we don't need to go down this road. And he goes, I'm going to be a little hard ass about this. Let's get back on the record. And he says, dude, you have an alibi. She says, yeah. He says, where were you? And she says, with Leo Bergen. And then kicks in endless love. <laughs> the way it, the way it kind of moved in, you know, it, it's almost yeah. like when you hear the Luther song, you know, the piano at the beginning, right? <laughs> And David's hurt because apparently she spent the entire night with Leo Bergen. Uh, yes. Le- and that was on the record, dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> I could have told, you, could have told yeah. you on the side. But no. and, yeah, and again, men, late, see men, once again, men, these are these are all cues for us. Right. Anytime your woman says she doesn't really want to talk about it, you might, you might even stop the line of questioning. Yeah. You're about to get hurt, yeah. for real. <laughs> You're about because that's the state. Well, I don't really want to talk about it right now. Okay. <laughs> See, old married guys, we know. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I don't want to know what happened at homecoming <laughs> with the football team. Okay. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't know why I couldn't reach you for uh, 48 hours <laughs> on that Sunday. I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know why there's a long blonde hair in your hair. <laughs> you got an afro. I don't want to. I want to know why you smell like bleach. I don't want to. <laughs> you don't want to know, man. Not smell, you smell like bleach. Not smell like bleach. <laughs> oh man. All over you smell like bleach. I don't know why. Quinn is back in bed with Charlie again. And Charlie's in the bathroom, and his phone is ringing, and uh, he tells Quinn, turn turn my phone off. And as she's getting it out of his uh, gym bag or whatever, she sees the Queen of Hearts kill card with her her picture on it. Yeah. So that means that, you know, Charlie is supposed to be killing, per orders from B613, because he's cleaning the house, Rowan is, his order is to kill Quinn. And when she shows Charlie the card, <laughs> two words. Oh crap! <laughs> that's what he. That's what. That's what he says. And then they go, Mister and Mrs. Smith, on each other, right? Remember? While in this love continues. Yeah, while in this love continues. This is where this, the music really fit the situation <laughs> because they were they were tussling up in there. They, they were not playing around. They beat the brakes off each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did, man. So she, she went toe to toe. I give it. She went toe to toe with him, man. You know. But. Uh, he says, I can't, I, I, can't, I can't kill you. I couldn't do it. You know? And so they leave it right there. Huck tracks down Rowan's car to Roanoke, Virginia. Roanoke, Virginia. How do you say that? Yeah. Roanoke. Roanoke. And let's never say it again. All right. He tells Jake. <laughs> Have you ever been? No. <laughs> he, that's the only thing that's in Roanoke is Rowan's car. He, tell, he, t- <laughs> <laughs> he tells Jake uh the situation they decide that, that he's probably in mansfield where they have a, a a level seven safe house i didn't know there were levels to safe houses oh yeah i did only there's levels to this man <laughs> i know <laughs> <laughs> safe house. I'm telling you forever. so when so when huck tells jake that it's that, you know they decide he's probably at the le- level seven safe house in, in mansfield jake apparently takes a bullet train to to uh to the safe house i mean he blinks and he's there it's like 
like it's the last episode for break. We got to make it happen. You got I dream of genie. He went I dream of genie on her, man, on, on the trip, man. So, so Jake is going up the stairs to this safe house, and Shonda shot this so incredibly well because you know Rowan is 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 pouring wine in a glass and stuff, and he's uh, you know, you know, he's, he seems to be in a pretty good mood. Smelling the cork. Smelling the cork and everything. And then, you know, Jake opens the door and Rowan turns. But those are two different locations because Rowan's not, I mean, yeah, he's not there. Eli's not there, man. He's what, Tony? He's not there, man. <laughs> but uh, he, he actually is at Olivia Pope's apartment. Man, she locks on, this, on these homes. <laughs> man. Let this be a lesson to you at home. You need to definitely get some kind of alarm system on your house. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> apparently, apparently keys and locks don't work anymore. Well, she she gets home, and she has no idea, and she, she walks by the dining room table, and he calls her out, scared the hell out of her. He's scared the hell out of her, and he chit-chats with her, and he tells her to sit down, and she tells him to leave, and he pulls out a gun and tells her to sit. And she's got the, the struggle face, man, and she's... So she sits down, and so she starts giving him the the soliloquy that that he's world famous for now giving folks, you know. And then he snaps and he just starts yelling. There there'd be no Olivia Pope if not for me. Mm -hmm. I like I like that because normally as Troy does, uh, Rowan that he does a measured soliloquy, <laughs> but now Rowan is emotional. Because he's like, damn, I can't believe it. At the end of the day, I'm your daddy. I got your back. I raised you. I protected you. And your ass is still riding with these other dudes. Right. So he wasn't in this soliloquy form. He was a much more emotional. Yeah. Rolling. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he put the gun down on the table. And okay. then he, he, he resumes his soliloquy. <laughs> right. And she picks up the gun and she points it at him. And, you know... <laughs> He's, he's telling her, you know, you ain't, you know, yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. He, he switched up for a second, though. Yeah, he did. Well, I think uh, he was he was disappointed. Be careful what you're about to do. I mean, you know, it's kind of like, yeah. you know, the suspense, the way he acted it out was like, oh, you, you, you had a you had a feeling that she going to do it? Yeah. You know, she, she's ready for a kill did, shot. Did he say, oh, watch out now? <laughs> <laughs> did he say that at some point? Or something like that. You know? Uh, hold, 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 hold up. <laughs> <laughs> mine? Mine? So mine yourself now. She, pull, she pulls the trigger, though. Oh, damn. Olivia! But the gun is empty. Yes. It was a test. Yeah, and she boy. failed miserably in, Oli in uh, hey, Eli's Olivia. eyes, man. So now he's really pissed because he can't believe. I mean, he says, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? And, and he leaves, and and he's hurt, and he's he's. I think he's more mad than hurt though, because, you know, to him that's the ultimate betrayal. I mean, your daughter has an opportunity to kill you, and she takes it. Thank God for him, it was a test, because like I said, the gun was empty. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I can see where he's coming from, being disappointed. I mean, even as foul as he is, you know, she pulled it. You don't expect his own daughter to pull the trigger and kill him. Tony, I think I think I disagree with you. I think he's more hurt than mad. I think he's more hurt than mad. You think so? Yeah, because, yeah, your damn daughter pulled the trigger. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> that little pulled the trigger. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think he's getting hurt. And and I and I gotta tell you, I, I'm on I'm on team team Rowan on this one, man. Yeah. You can't put, shoot your Jake's father raped his wife. <laughs> and probably is the father of his son. He wouldn't kill his daddy. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You mean Fitz? Fitz's father. Sorry. Yeah. Fitz's father. Fitz's I was, father. I was I was like, wait a minute, I missed an episode. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Fitz's father. No, yeah. Fitz's father. You know what I mean? Like Fitz wouldn't kill his dad and his dad was the devil. Yeah. Rowan is he is what he is. I, I I'm I'm on team dad on this one. I'm sorry. Alright. Okay. She pulled the trigger, man? She did pull the trigger. <laughs> Hey, a, a little, I can't take it anymore. Can't, can't take it anymore. It's, I'm, I'm on a team Olivia if you're going to be on team Rowan. Okay. <laughs> she, 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 she's just overwhelmed uh, with an over-controlling father. You know? Mm -hmm. Every every opportunity that she has. Now, you know, maybe she's blindly doing things. But she is 
and everybody, even Rowan said, you are Olivia Pope, which is, you know, co-sign for a bad mother. So, <laughs> so, so, she, so she has the abilities, wherever she learned them from, and I think she's like, every time I'm trying to make something happen, here you are. Mm-hmm. Get out of my way. Right. Let me get my Pope on. Right. But the, the question, though, who would Olivia Pope be without a dad? She'd be Olivia Pope. Would she? She would be. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how much. I don't know how much her father influenced everything and everything she's been able to make happen. Because, it's not, but it's not. She, she would have killed her if she if she weren't his daughter. She would have been dead a long time ago. <laughs> well, maybe because her influence her influence is too too broad on you know the president and different things. But but but, but I'm I'm not sure that everybody knew that he was her father as she built her business. I'm, no, no, no. I'm not. I'm saying behind the scenes. Oh, okay. I'm saying behind the scenes. Okay. Like the, the things that happen behind what's going on. That's what he specializes in. Right. You no. Know? Right. Mm. I got you. I got you. So Quinn, Quinn and Charlie are sitting in the car, and uh, he tells Quinn that he was the one that was ordered to get those B six thirteen files. <laughs> Remember when? And he was the one who switched them out for blank white paper. When David and his and his uh, guys, uh, you know, were going through them last week, yeah, and uh, he offers to uh, some files to make up for ruining Huck's life. I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see. That's the part. I, I was, for me, there was a disconnect there because, as as we all know, you know, Huck skinned him alive, literally, like in season <laughs> two. So what is there to make up? I mean, Huck skinned him alive. So Charlie basically ruins his life, and now Charlie has to well, do Huck a solid. Well, remember, remember Huck. Huck. Charlie, remember when Huck was in the Marine Corps and he was recruited into B six thirteen. Charlie was the was the guy who who uh, turned him. Yeah, turned him into B six thirteen. Right. Trained him up or whatever. Remember, he was in the hole, and they, there was a whole lot of of psychological transformation right. that had to happen to get him to become a killer. No, I get Charlie's that. responsible for that. No, I get that, but you know, after so that, that ruined his life. But but after that, when Huck had to go get go go for Charlie, you remember he had him he had the knife out and he skinned him alive. So I mean yeah. Well Tony but Tony you're forgetting is uh Quinn has a a chip that Charlie will do things for. <laughs> she has a, she has a, she has some things that we don't have, Tony. Well, okay. Uh, she has something that she has that that never ending thing that, <laughs> that never ending that gift that keeps on giving, if you will. That thing, I mean, that it thing. Fun, it is funny that they did have a knockout brawl, and as they're afterwards, uh, almost like sex, basking in the glow of this beating they just gave each other. Right. The first thing that pops in her head is the fact that Huck's life has been yeah. ruined by Charlie. So you know, yeah. I guess she gets. I guess she gets a uh, Olivia Pope coat. <laughs> so so she gets a half a white coat for the day. So Huck and Charlie are her Fitz and Jake. Huh. You know, okay. kind of a kind of a motley crew, but yes. <laughs> Olivia goes to visit Mama Pope. And wants to know where Eli is. And Mama Pope says, I don't know where she is. And Olivia says, you have to know. you got a PhD in his crazy. Damn. <laughs> that was a line right there. You know? And, and Mama Pope is so chill, man. She is so laid back. She goes, girl, you need to move on. <laughs> Mama Pope. Mama Pope. <laughs> Acted like she was from Baltimore in that scene. <laughs> that was that was Mama Pope uh, Carrie uh, from uh, the, the the block and the wire. I mean, she she reminded me of Baltimore when she said that girl. She was like, girl, you need to stop. And then when Olivia started to fake cry and she shut her down, yeah. Olivia it looked like she was fake. Cry. Yeah, it was like. Girl, please. You know, turn the waterworks off quick. And, and and the thing with Mama Pope here, she is chained to a table, you know, and and she's calling her daughter Boo. <laughs> she's like, oh Boo, come on, <laughs> you know. And what about when Mama Pope kind of rolls up and Olivia step back like? Ah! <laughs> but here, he, would, but here, if I were Olivia Pope, I'd have been like, how do you know about all these current phrases? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
How you know about all these ratchet comments? Yeah. 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 <laughs> You've been in jail for 20 years. But you know what? Uh, Mama Pope put it all in perspective when she told Olivia, you're just like him. Well, he said he said it too. You know? Yeah. But when, but when you know, when Mama says it though, yeah. you know, and then, but then Mama explains why you're, you're just like your daddy, you know? And she realizes that mom is right. So that's when you get the other struggle face. Yes. And then the mama's like, cry me a river, Livy, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, that, I don't know that, that line was pretty. That was one of the lines, too. Yeah. And so Olivia, whatever. Olivia's leaving, and mama says, I'll see you tomorrow. Because your daddy came and saw me every day for 22 years. So I'll see, yeah. I'll see you just tomorrow. Because like your you're just like your daddy. Uh, well, I remember... That just like your daddy line will, will rip through your heart when you're young. You know that? Yeah. When I was a young man, Troy knows this story. Yeah. I was staying with my Aunt Mary and I'd go get a go get, you know, drink a lot of Kool-Aid. And my man would say, You gonna you gonna be an alcoholic just like your daddy. <laughs> huh? <laughs> the, it hurts. It hurts. The, emo it hurts. the emotional baggage that scandal will bring out of people, man. And she was right. Man. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia goes to see Cyrus, who who is. Wait, 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 whoa, Tony. Wait a minute now. What happened? <laughs> what about at the end of the scene after she dismissed Olivia? Then you had a chance to see Mama Pope kind of break down a little bit. She yeah. did. And yeah, forget about that. Yeah, well, you're right. You're right. She did. And, and and that was Candy Alexander. Yeah. In a vulnerable moment. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, wow. Yeah. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. I mean, and for all the bravado that she has, it finally she was like, well, <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know what she was thinking. Like, well, like she's not coming tomorrow. <laughs> right. <laughs> what she was thinking, or. Or, you know, yeah. I, I've lost her. I don't have a connection. There's something was going on. It's always, that, always, that always strikes me funny, though, how, how, you know, people will tell somebody off, and then when that person leaves, they feel bad. It's like, well, you're the one around. <laughs> you're, right. you're the one that went in on them. So. Yeah, you did this. Maybe maybe she can bring me some lighter chains, and now I've ruined it. I don't know, you know. It's hard to be tra chained every day. Yeah. It's hard to be. Olivia goes to see Cyrus, and he's packing up, man. He's leaving town. You know, and and he says he's going to go to Europe because they're a little bit more forgiving. <laughs> so he's, I mean, he's pack, he's he's packing up and he's moving out. And she says, "When did you decide to let them ruin you?" She because she says, "I'm going to talk to you like you would talk to you." Mm. The Cyrus I know, Cyrus doesn't, I know doesn't, doesn't cry like a little bitch baby is what she tells him. And how bitch baby? And and she she did fire him up. Fire him up. She fired him up. He decides to stay and fight. And Cyrus and Michael uh, do a TV interview announcing their engagement. Did, they, did the bitch baby soften the bitch comment on TV? Is that why? They, you know what I'm saying? Did the sisters let bitch baby go? I don't know because I mean, they, they use that phrase on one of Shonda's other shows. I think they use it on How to Get Away with Murder. Yeah, last night. <laughs> yes, yeah. it was on there too. It was a bitch baby night it's, on ABC. That's right. It, I mean, they said it five times in the scene. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, I, I didn't know you could say. It. I thought you had to. Yeah, I didn't know you could say bitch baby, but now I'm, I'm glad we're clear. Yeah, well, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. So uh, they do the TV interview. Uh, Cyrus and Michael announcing their engagement, and then Cyrus is back in his office at the White House. He's unpacking his stuff, uh, and Fitz tell him that he's told him that he, I saw the interview, and uh, Fitz um, and, and Cyrus tells him, well, you know, I'm marrying a whore, so you know, exactly. at least I know what These I'm paying for, two. right? The two most important words in Shondaland are bitch, baby, and whore. <laughs> <laughs> we use liberally throughout any episode, any program. Yeah. And the beauty is that they, it was used with men. So that's the, ah, ah, I see you, yeah. I see you, Shonda. Yeah. <laughs> so not, not, women not involved, that's so true. yes. Elizabeth goes to see Melly about the president not going to war in Angola. She don't know that Melly knows about her affair with the vice president. So Liz, Liz tells her, I thought you and I were on the same page. And Melly tells her, because we're both screwing Andrew? The, That's hilarious. You know, <laughs> that, that doesn't make us friends. It makes us both at risk for the same STDs. That was funny, too. That was like, ugh! <laughs> Body blow! That was a good line. Because everybody knows the first lady don't wear protection. <laughs> <laughs> she, she has protection. She just don't wear protection. <laughs> My magnum is assigned to me in room B. <laughs> when it comes to screwing someone, she says, 
I'm not nearly as gentle as Andrew because for me it will hurt. Mm. Dang. That that was weird and also maybe gave me a slight thrill. I mean. <laughs> you got you got a little chubby off of that one. <laughs> like, oh, oh, oh. That that line could you could have get lost on that one because she had so many other scud missiles she fired. Oh man. Prior to that one, that was like the that was the last. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just, Oh, yeah. there she, was, she was she was she was riddled by so many scuds that, that was just a little and no time to react. Man. Olivia peeks inside the Oval Office and sees Fitz, Abby, and Cyrus. You know, laughing it up, having a drink. You know, everything seems to be okay. And and, and the president's one of his uh, secretaries says, "You can go in, Miss Pope, anytime." And she says, "Nah, I'm good." She's she thinks she's she's like you know Cyrus is back and all is good in the world. So Huck goes. And that's, and that, that's, that's a sidelight. That's a sidelight also, guys. For for white people, that's how people of color feel in America all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking at the white folks have fun. So let me not go in and ruin the fun. <laughs> This is messed up. I'm playing. I'm playing. Puck goes to see his ex, and, and he he asks her to hear him out, and she threatens to call police. But he says, you know what? He's got a couple of those B six thirteen files. I guess Charlie got him to got him the files, right? And he wants her to read the B six thirteen files that he's left on her on her front porch, so that she can see that he hasn't been lying. And he leaves them there. He leaves them there in those Acme boxes. <laughs> And, and you know, and and she, he, I, he just wants her to read the files so she'll know the truth, the truth that he's been telling all along. Now, if she chooses not to believe those files, then he just needs to leave her alone. Yeah. You know, you know, he he could have. Huck is a technological genius. You know, he could have put those on a Kindle for her. On the set. People don't read like that anymore. She's right. confused. Like, who's gonna carry these in the house for me? Right. <laughs> and two, two things. Number one, like I said, huh? I'm gonna read two boxes of stuff on you. I don't even like you. And then number two, I think there was there was a deadbeat dad wishing he could do that. Like watching the show, like, man, I wish I could <laughs> go over Boom Sheikah's house. <laughs> And, and leave a file and be like, this is what happened. <laughs> you don't believe me, but this is what happened, Pumchika. <laughs> okay. Okay, let me read it. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> the, the, v, the VP goes to the Oval to see Fitz. And uh, Quinn, Quinn is going over the video footage of the VP bombing. Remember when he was leaving that hotel and he stopped to talk to hotel workers? And she notices, she notices that the VP that knew the that the bomb was coming because he kind of moved away, uh, you know, like out of the out of the out of the way of, of being in harm. He kind of like he he was kind of like offsides in a way. He did a pivot, you know. And and uh, she caught that on the video and shows Huck, who by the way Huck noticed that her face was beaten up from her tussle with uh, with Charlie. So, but uh, Jake goes to see Olivia. Olivia, for some reason, is in a great mood, and he notices that, and she doesn't want to talk about her father. She wants to dance, and Stevie wonders, uh, don't you worry about a thing is playing, and he says, man, do I love you, and she's dancing and everything, and, you know, he's dancing with her, you know. Does he got skills as a dancer, man? No. No? <laughs> it's too much. Too much, man. Just too much. Just too much movement. Just, yeah, <laughs> just uh, hit that two-step, and you're good. Yeah. This zone. also, this also like confirms like it's fine. You know, we of course it's a fantasy, but it's as fine as Olivia is. I think guys look at her and be like, crazy. That 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 right there was crazy. You know what I mean? Like you see her one moment, the sun is the sun died. Yeah, the, the next sun moment, went down. yeah, the like, I'm happy. It's like okay, <laughs> she be the kind of chick you could you could kick it with, but you would not fall in love with because you're crazy. Well. He says, man, do I love you. She says, uh, she doesn't say I love you back. She says, I want Vermont with Fitz, and I want the sun with you, and I'm not choosing. And then uh, they start making, he, she wants to have sex on the piano that's in the room. She said, I've never had sex on a piano before. 
So now it's time to get freaky. So he goes to the bedroom to get a blanket and a pillow. And when he gets back, she's gone. The glass of wine she was drinking is spilled on the couch. And the front door is open and she is gone. He didn't hear anything. He's a B613 agent. He ran command for a couple weeks and he didn't he, that that got by him. He was excited, man. That's why he needed to turn his Stevie Wonder down. <laughs> and probably, you know what? I never had wanted to do it on the piano. I did do it on the organ once. So. Is that right? Huh? Was, was, it, was it a Hammond organ, man? What? <laughs> was it a Casio? What was it, man? <laughs> <laughs> I need some clarification. Yeah, yeah. You, did it, you did it on an organ. Yeah. Was your foot was your, was your foot on the pedal? <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, Alrighty then. No kissing and telling here, Mister. So, so the vice president, as we find out in his conversation with Fitz in the Oval. Uh, basically, the vice president tells her, tells the president, what would you do if the most important thing to you was taken? You know, I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but as it turns out, he, he's, he's the one, he's the evil one. He's the one who had Olivia kidnapped, and he's doing that to leverage Olivia against the president. To what end, though? To, to, to be president? You know, Fitz has to resign and he gets to move up. Is that the reason why? What's the reason no. why, Troy? He wants war. the war. He wants the yeah. war in, in West Angola. But, but, I mean, why does he want the war in West Angola? Uh, I don't know. We're going to find out, Tony. Halliburton. Yeah, that kind of deal. <laughs> you know, we could, have, we could have set up a deal like that. Yeah. Maybe he's got a, a company or there's, there's some interest there. He doesn't have to be president uh, to make something like that happen. But, but, you, the, but go ahead, Mark. Shout out to the ambassador to Angola. <laughs> Lisa Gay Hamilton. Lisa Gay. She was she had she got her African on. Yes, she did. In that quick scene. It was like, go ahead, girl. Yeah. What, I, I know you're from St. Louis. What, what, what does that pay, man? That 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 twenty second scene? What is that? Ten she probably got yeah. Ten thousand? Ten grand. She'll be back. I, I think she's gonna I think that that she'll be, you know, have a more expanded role later. We do not need to go to wall. You know, she'll be back. <laughs> but 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 you know what? Here, here's here's the thing though, is that like, you know, you can mess with Fitz about Olivia, but you can't mess mess with Eli Pope about Olivia. You kidnapped Eli Pope's daughter. Now Eli Pope may have been disappointed and hurt that she pulled that trigger earlier, but you know what? That's still my daughter, and you, you, you kidnapped, you took her against her will. Now, so now, <clears throat> he's got, he, you know, the vice president is going to have his hands full with Jake and mostly with Eli Pope when Eli finds out that, that you know, don't you think that Eli will like be livid when he finds out that his daughter was kidnapped? So Tony, once again, Tony Scott has been in the table read. <laughs> <laughs> so now, after, so you're telling me. After Olivia and Jake Fitz team up to kill Rowan, yeah. Now she's been kidnapped, and now Fitz and Rowan are gonna have to connect to 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 get Olivia back. Well, you know what? I mean, I mean, Jake and Fitz. After Fitz beat the hell out of Jake while he was chained up, they 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 come together. So you know, but you know, nobody messes with Eli Pope. But he said, "You're gonna miss me when I'm gone." Yeah. Yeah. This, yeah. This is the time to miss him. But but you know what? I I, I just think she that might, she might learn a lesson. I think that. Oh, yeah, I think I'm with I'm with uh, Tr I'm with Tony. I think it's gonna be uh, Rowan and Fitz are gonna be like super friends. Form up. <laughs> you know, they're, gonna... <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna team up. <laughs> I think I think so, man. I, I think I think because you know what? As as like I said, as angry and hurt as Eli is with Olivia, because she pulled that trigger. That's, you know what, that's me, that's, you know, Eli's like, that's me that's mad at my daughter. That don't give you the right to snatch her off the street or out of her apartment and kidnap her for your own personal purpose of blackmailing the president or whatever it is that you want. You don't, you can grab anybody, but you don't grab my daughter, even though I'm pissed at her. You don't grab my, I just can't see Eli letting that go, even though he's angry with her. But no, Tony's she's all in. But she's not going to get a lesson. I mean, he wants to teach her a lesson, too. Um, That's true. I mean, un unless he's behind this with the vice president. Ah. No. I don't, I don't, think, I don't, I don't think so, though. 
Oh, you, you, you really are teasing this next, uh, this <laughs> I'm, tr- I'm trying to get you, I'm trying to get you through the winter break, man. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm like, wow, I never thought all this, man. Well. I like to think about it. So. I like the fact when, when, uh, when, 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 uh, Rowan delivered the albums, he did have that Ramsey Lewis on top. <laughs> <laughs> Were, were, you, were you like were you like everybody else was trying to see what other album covers there were there? He had he had, he had uh, Ramsey Lewis. He had uh, he had uh, what's the the pink? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the, not Manhattan. So, but, uh, I can't pick. I'm the, the black the Blackbirds. Okay. Oh wow. Well, you know what? I can see why he would have the Blackbirds being in D.C. and Donald Byrd was you know. See? Look, at, look at that boy. That, you can't teach that, Tony Scott. <laughs> but, Tony knows but to Steve, you know, Texas, but you know what? You know Don't you worry about a thing was not in Songs in the Key of Life, though. We're going to start splitting hairs here. And the Songs oh. in the Key of Life album is an iconic. That album cover is iconic. I mean, is it? Yeah. you see that album cover, you know what that is. Everybody knows what, what that is. is. I thought they were going to go with Isn't She Lovely? She's one year old, one year old. He plays Isn't She Lovely. That's what I thought was a logical pick. So don't worry about a thing. was like, okay, all right. But I like that was, one too. That was her pick. That wasn't his pick. He was listening to, he said uh, he was listening to the album. Yeah. Okay. And he didn't say a specific she song. She listened to the album and she, so the, I like this song. So the Stevie Wonder album with Don't You Worry About a Thing was in the mix of vinyl that she had that was sitting on that table. She saw that, right. this is my song. She puts it on the yeah. turntable. Uh, and then she starts right. dancing, and then whatever Jake was doing that was supposed to be a dance. I... <laughs> Jake, yes, Jake was Jake. Doing the, you know what he was doing, the funky chicken. <laughs> the, old, the old standby, man? That's the old standby, man. <laughs> <laughs> Black folks, two-step. Yeah. White folks, standard dance, the funky chicken. The funky chicken. Well. And that is, the one, that is the one thing that when sisters date white guys, that is the one thing that they kind of... When you put on, when you when you at a cookout or you you jamming at the house and you look over and you see your sculpted, good-looking white boyfriend dancing off beat, looking stupid, you be like, <laughs> I'm about to call Tyrone just for the dance. Unless, unless, unless though, unless you're you're you know you're dating John Travolta because John John has John got some steps, man. I don't know, overrated, Tony. You know? Nah. And how about the dude from NBC, David Gregory? He's got some moves, too, man. You ever see that video of him dancing to Mary J. Uh, to Mary J. Blige's uh, song? I don't know, Tony. Been- there's, also, there's also a white guy, a line dancer in Memphis, who went viral because he <laughs> apparently had all the steps to the, to the slide down. You got to see it. It's amazing. I think the, I give you, man, Shannon, speak of uh, white men who dance, uh, Shannon, Shannon Tatum, what's his name, Shannon Tatum? Whatever. Channing Tatum? Yeah, I think he, he can dance. He can dance? Okay. All right. Now we've lost all our white viewers and stuff because we're just, <laughs> we just... It's all in fun. You know, we, come on, man. <laughs> it's all in fun. You, we, we don't have a racist bone in our body. We just joke. You, we just joke. You have, they are joking. You ever see any of us dance? Room got who'd quiet. Who'd win, who'd win the dance contest? Yeah, Troy's the best dancer of us three. Uh, I, I don't know. And, and then Tony is a, a, a third, a no. way behind third. I'm, Tony Mark, don't dance. Mark could be the best. Yeah. But see, the problem with Mark's dancing is he is going to go, he's going to go way above and beyond. He's going to try a split. He's going to do, you know, <laughs> he's going to twerk. He's going to do all these things that he has no business doing. <laughs> you're right. Actually, you're right. Bro. Yeah, when, it, when you see a big guy do this, no, it's too much. It's too well, much. I, know, I know it's too much. It's too much. Well, I was told that the only man who could ever dance and in, in, in keep his man card and dance with his, with his uh, uh, arms above his head was Marvin Gaye. Oh, yeah. Marvin, Marvin was the only one who could pull that off. Everyone else is going to be questioned. Marvin was not dancing. Well, yeah. He was making love to the audience. He was making love to air. You heard that lady in the front row on that live album. Ow! <laughs> it won't. <laughs> yeah. 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 You got you to, yeah, Marvin got a whole bunch of passes. You, you know, on stage, shirt off, nappy head, chest hair, cummerbund. <laughs> and a skull cap. <laughs> yeah, Marvin, you can pull that. Only Marvin can pull that off. Man. And be cool as hell. Be cool, That's, as, be cool as hell. Yeah. yeah. Man, Marvin, may he rest in peace, man. So that's our episode of the uh, When the Sun Don't Shine uh, of Scandal. Now we're in a winter break, so we'll have to wait, I think, until the end of January 
before it when picks that, up. That line, by the way. Huh? What was the line, guys? The sun don't shine. Where did that come from? I think I missed that line. I, I missed it too. I missed it too. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I mean, we know the sun is going down. The sun reference was running okay. rampant. Well, well, maybe it had to do with uh, Jake and Olivia, and the sun isn't. You know, she said the sun that ain't gonna happen. So maybe that's that, that's where it's from. But I'm sure somebody will correct us in the comments. We get many comments when we post the video, so we thank you for that. But uh, we'll see what happens, man, when it comes back. So and a thumbs up would be great too. Yes, Troy, thank you very much. So. That's the episode, and uh, again, we do Men on Everything that we'll continue to do during the hiatus. We do that once a week also where we take a look at uh, headlines and the news. Uh, as of this recording, we haven't heard uh, anything about uh, anything coming down about the thing in Ferguson, So, but we'll, we'll be on that when we're on next week. So leave a comment. So you, don't have, you don't have to miss us. No. You, don't have, you can be a Scandal fan, but you know, if you like us, we're here every week. That's it. And we're not racist every episode either. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> I'm getting, you know, we're not racist. We love white people. Come on. You know, hey, thanks for watching Men on Scandal. That's Mark Clark in New York, Troy Johnson in Washington, D.C. I'm Tony Scott in St. Louis, and we'll see you soon.